So we look at a chemical synaptic transmission. What we're really looking at is we have, you know, our vessels right at the end. And then, so we have our presynaptic terminals right here. And then at the other end, we have our postsynaptic terminal. And then what's going to happen is we're going to have release of the contents from the presynaptic going to the postsynaptic. And then of course we know that the center is the synapse. And then we have what's known as the active zone that's basically right around here. And the active zone, as you probably know, is it's a voltage-gated calcium channels. And they're adjacent to the anchored synaptic vesicle, vesicles. And then we have our terminal boutons, which have synaptic vesicles that store neurotransmitters. So they're going to be right around here. They're going to be these vesicles that store the neurotransmitters. And once calcium comes in, which we're going to see in a bit, it's going to allow the vesicles to come to the presynaptic terminal and then butt off, releasing the contents into the, the space between the pre- and postsynaptic um, terminals. So basically what happens is we're going to have, if we look at you know, the, the steps, we have depolarization at the nerve terminal. This is going to open the voltage-gated calcium channels, and that's going to release the calcium into the, um, in the active zone. Then calcium is going to come down the electrochemical gradient which is going to increase calcium, uh, free calcium concentration. This is going to allow for vesicle fusion. And then we have exocytosis into the active zone and finally release. So if we look at what this really looks at like, we'll slowly see what the the vesicle is going to look like. So if we kind of imagine a vesicle, um, which I'm going to make kind of, kind of large just so we have a better idea of what the vesicle looks like. So if we imagine a vesicle right here, we can see what's going to happen. So here we have the vesicle. We've got a little mitochondria right here. And then we have another vesicle right here, which is going to be our budding vesicle. And then of course we're gonna have storage for our calcium. So now the key thing to remember is that in the vesicle itself, the probability that the vesicle will synapse or have a, um, a synapse and a release, it depends on the number of vesicles available. So the number of vesicles that are anchored onto the membrane at the active zone, the, and it also depends on the concentration of calcium. If we have a higher concentration of calcium, then we're going to have a higher probability that there's going to be a synapse. And transmitters release when the action potential fire, uh, firing stops and calcium is removed from the terminal. So now let's look back at this diagram right here. So we know that calcium is stored in the mitochondria as well. It's also stored in the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So we have also, uh, some is in the endoplasmic reticulum where we have it here. 
So I'm going to label this quickly for you guys. So we have this guy right here, which is our uh, mitochondria. And this guy right here, we're going to call it our endoplasmic reticulum. Also know it, if we're talking about muscles, we're talking about our sarcoplasmic reticulum. And then we have calcium binding also occurring on, um, we have these calcium binding proteins that are going to hold our calcium. And then we have these exchangers. So our exchangers, which this one right here is an antiport, is going to allow calcium to, to leave as sodium comes in. And as you probably guessed it, this is a sodium calcium exchanger. And then we have a second route. We have this antiport right here with a cal sodium calcium exchanger. And then we have an antiport, I mean, uh, another port which is going to allow calcium to diffuse out as well. And this is going to only occur with the exchange of ATP becoming ADP. And you probably guessed it based on the name. This is a calcium ATPase. As you know, calcium, and then we have our enzyme that breaks down the ATP into ADP, making it the calcium ADPase. So basically what we see here are these are methods that we can remove calcium from the vesicle. We have our sodium calcium exchanger that's allowing for calcium to leave the vesicle. And this is a mode of secondary active transport across the neuron membrane. Then we have across our sarcoplasmic reticulum um, this is going to be the allowing for the release of calcium as well. And this is going to be aided through a calcium ATPase. And this is going to return calcium to the SR. And this is basically primary active transport. And then we have our mitochondria itself that can uptake calcium by binding, uh, through binding proteins when levels of calcium are high. So if we have too much calcium other than the mitochondria or the binding proteins are going to be the method to remove calcium so that everything is working the way it should. So now that we see how the vesicles work, let's go a little further and look at what's going to happen in terms of our presynaptic terminal. So the presynaptic terminal, what we have We have our endosome, and then we also have our calcium. And as we learned, we have these vesicles that are going to be distributing content. So it's going to be giving off our neurotransmitters. And then what happens is the vesicles are reformed and brought back into the endosome. And this is basically occurring through vesicle fusion and opening, and this is triggered all by the increased concentration of calcium. The vesicle retrieval is basically vesicle membrane is coated with clathrin, and when clathrin and calcium interact, it's going to allow budding off and fusing with the endosomes from which a new vesicle is formed. So you can either have fusing with the endosome or budding off of the endosome. So this is basically a process of recycling that allows for this constant creation and destruction or uh, recycling of the vesicle so we can continue to have neurotransmitter released or calcium or ions released. And then basically at the postsynaptic membrane, so what we saw before, 
we have our postsynaptic membrane who is taking this content. And at the postsynaptic membrane, we've got this content that's being picked up. And the way it can work, we can have um, ports basically right here that can take the calcium or the neurotransmitter or whatever it is and bring it in. But we have different types of receptors and different types of processes that can either block or allow for the transport. So you can have an ag agonist, which is basically a ligand that produces a response in the target cell when it binds the receptor. So once we have binding, we have a response in the target cell. And then we can have an antagonist. So as it sounds, it's going to basically block out what's going to happen. So an antagonist will bind right here with a higher affinity to the receptor. But it's basically going to stop response. So if we have an antagonist here, it's not going to allow for response to occur. But now if we have an agonist, the agonist is going to bind onto the receptor and the receptor is going to have some send a signal in for response to occur. And lastly we have a transducer and that's a receptor that converts a chemical signal into a cellular response. So it's going to take a chemical signal from outside and convert it into a cellular response. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave it uh, below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And um, if you like my channel, please subscribe.